Uh, hi everyone, great to see you today. Um, if we haven't spoken already, uh, we're just outside the door here, our stand, uh, but Ross Martin from Sentinel One. Um, so my role here at Sentinel One is pre-sales, so getting involved in the technical aspect of, of, of the sales cycle. Uh, but here today to talk to you, of course, about XDR, which even at this point, perhaps you're thinking, great, another buzzword, uh, if you haven't come across this one already. Um, but as was said before, we're gonna try and you know, break this down a little bit and tell you what it means uh, to us here at Sentinel One. I think, uh, as with any presentation, a good place to start is with a big, bold statement. Um, so cybersecurity uh, on its current path is unsustainable. That's how we see it, and there's really a few reasons for this. Um, as many of you in the room may be aware, um, the autonomy behind you know, malicious actors and, and the groups that they uh, perform in is at an all-time high, really. So we can think of things like ransomware as a service, right, which is pretty, pretty uh, freely available today. Um, but we think about, yeah, all the autonomy that they build into those processes and the ease of, uh, the ease of attacks. Um, now, the problem arises when we compare that to how we're resourcing against cybersecurity. So, you know, you can see up there, uh, 262 billion annual cybersecurity spend. Uh, despite that, we've still got 162 uh, average days dwell time of attackers in our network, which is, you know, simply too long. So what does this mean? Well, ultimately, it means that despite the spend on both tools and uh, you know, people as resources in, in our SOC teams or beyond, um, we just can't keep up with the automation that's being created by these threat actor groups. And what that creates then um, is this threat efficiency gap. And that's something that's probably been compounded more over the last few years you know, with COVID-19 and whatever, as we've seen the, uh, the perimeter uh, move out wider, right? So, not naturally within the office, working within the office, but now people you know, logging in from home uh, you know, really compounds this problem and makes it something that we need to address going forward. Um, so just before we do that then, let's talk about what we've seen historically um, in the security space, right? How have we responded to attacks? I'm sure again that many of you here will be familiar with uh, these right from the very start on the left-hand side in, time, in terms of uh, the I love you uh, email, right? Which may be the first clickbait that we ever saw. Um, but all the way through to you know, more modern attacks, so going past TJ Maxx, where you know, that, that was one of the first large-scale uh, collections of consumer credit card uh, details, um, into, again, very, very much covered at the time, but the attack on targets point of sale systems, uh, all things that, that we know uh, and have probably looked into in, in some detail. Um, but if we think about how do we typically react to those, right, in terms of prevention, detection, and response, well, primarily it started with that reactive approach, right? So wait for something to happen and then see what we can do about it. I think the best example of that is going to be something like a traditional antivirus, right? Where something lands on disk, you have a look at the signature. Does it match something bad? If it does, then let's block it. Let's get rid of it. Great. Um, but at the time, there was also additional methods that you could use, right? So things like, well, password protection is as simple as it sounds. Uh, additional ad blockers and, and spam filters. Uh, these are all things that still have some place today, um, but there are all the approach has changed over time. Um, so really that moved to this proactive approach, right, where, well, what can we put in place to anticipate problems that we might face? Of course, you can only do so much when you don't know what it is that you're going to be facing. But I think, again, in terms of proactivity, things like general awareness in cybersecurity have certainly grown over the last decade, as well as, you know, things like ethical hacking courses where you can go and understand, okay, well, how would somebody necessarily carry out this attack? Um, and also general levels of staff training, okay, maybe we, we don't get, um, you know, the, the results we want when we send out those phishing emails to all of our staff and a lot more people click them than we'd like to, um, but general awareness is, is higher than it once was. Um, so now in terms of framing that problem or zooming in on that problem a little bit closer, um, really this is something that SANS um, defines as, or pardon me, how SANS defines um, incident management is really into these three timelines. Uh, we can think of, well, pre-incident, what can we put in place, you know, again, to, to prevent this or, or lower our chances of, of something bad happening to uh, our business? Uh, well, we can do things like hardened systems. We can put, yeah, an EPP platform in place, absolutely. Uh, and we can learn from things that have happened in the past. Um, in terms of post-incident, though, um, again, we can learn what's happened in the past, but you can't protect what you don't know about. But ultimately, what we want to focus on um, as part of this, then, is that peri-incident timeline. So, uh, during the actual incident when it's happening in, in real time, uh, what are the several stages that come into that and you know, how can we speed up that process? Because if we think back, again, 162 days is far, long, uh, far too long uh, for anybody to be in our network. So if we zoom in on that peri-incident timeline then, we can really break that down into several stages here. 
So when we first detect something, to take an automatic response and hopefully send an alert to, to our security team. Uh, to identify where that came from, investigate, well, is it just this system? Is it this system or many systems? Um, and then to take a manual response, uh, verify containment, and only then have we contained that threat. But if you think about this in terms of the timeline then, there are a lot of those which are very um, human reliant in terms of somebody has to have you know, fingers on keyboards, uh, investigating an incident and understanding, okay, where did they come in? What did they touch? And um, what have they ultimately done? Um, and how can I you know, mitigate that? So this is something that XDR is looking to address in terms of bringing in the automation that uh, we, Sentinel-1, already have you know, in our endpoint protection platform and applying that to XDR. Um, so just to break down XDR a little bit further here then, uh, you can see that Forrester defined that as kind of the next natural uh, evolution of EDR, so endpoint detection and response. And endpoint detection and response, for those who aren't super familiar with it, is really how I like to think of it, is getting visibility into key systems, right? Understanding, again, where did something come from? What did it touch? Um, and ultimately, what was you know, the damage that it did? Um, so Forrester, yeah, define it as the next uh, kind of natural evolution of, uh, of EDR. Um, but if we think about that across the wider stack then, there's certainly things that we're doing today in terms of integrations with other tools. Um, you know, written uh, uh, API integrations written that we can fire off responses in other tools um, already, which is absolutely true. Um, so what we should definitely say at this point then is what XDR is not, because I've had this conversation a couple of times today as well. Um, people saying, well, you know, can't you achieve many of the same, uh, you know, outcomes as you can with an XDR tool as with a SIM tool, because essentially you're just, you know, connecting the dots uh, and finding the security elements within that. The first thing I'd say about that is that SIM was never really born with security in mind. Absolutely, it's a function of security, uh, but that was never the primary purpose, right? We're thinking things like log correlation, um, and that is a lot of data to handle at scale. So then the next point comes up, is it SOAR, so automation, uh, automation and response tools, or SIM and SOAR, right? So taking that data, ingesting that into a central place, and then wrapping orchestration around it. Which to some level it is, however, if we think about SOAR, some of the drawbacks about, you know, with those technologies are, they're very intensive in terms of writing those integrations. So quite often, you know, you'd have people on the security team write uh, playbooks um, so that you know, when X happens over here, we want Y solution to do this action, which is fine. But if you think about that again at scale, um, it's not something that scales well. So for example, if the employee that wrote that integration leaves the business, then perhaps the knowledge of that integration leaves with them and you no longer have the use of that integration. So what I'm trying to say here is that how we see XDR is you know, the ability to bring uh, extended detection and response across the stack, whether it be you know, email security, uh, identity, um, or, or many other pieces, um, to a business of any size, right, that doesn't have to have a fully-fledged SIM in place, a fully-fledged store in place, um, but within our console um, can integrate other tools, other best-of-breed solutions that they're already using in their stack, and automate responses in a much more streamlined approach. So we'll come on to show you um, exactly what that looks like in, in just a moment here. And so the problem as it is then, uh, more threats, more data, more security tools, and it's not necessarily going to scale in the way that we want it to. Um, in order to achieve a better outcome, we need a different approach. And this is how Sentinel-1 has kind of naturally um, evolved through that approach. We started in the, the next-gen antivirus space, so looking beyond you know, signature-based malware, but looking into behaviors. So you know, what is an attacker trying to do um, on that device, and how can we best prevent it? Um, our primary focus there was on the device at the time, right? Well, how can we reduce the impact of that device? I'm sure, again, many of you in this room have faced the, uh, the question of security versus user productivity when it comes to you know, um, uh, protecting people like your developers especially. Um, so that's where we were focused. But then the natural evolution of that was into EDR. So great, we can protect things. We need to know how those things got into the environment, right? So again, root cause, but ultimately understanding the incident itself. Um, and finally, as we've sp spoken about today, XDR, which is really outcome focused in terms of uh, building the resilience of the business, not just through a single tool, but through the power of those tools integrated. So just very quickly um, on those integrations, we made an acquisition in, at the end of 2021. Um, it was a technology called Scalar, which is essentially makes our data lake backend now. Um, and so, yeah, we can ingest so uh, multiple sources, whether they be things like firewall logs, um, whether they be, as I mentioned before, best of breed tools, um, uh, uh, Office 365 logs, all, all sorts of things that we can pull into our data lake and then use the correlation that we're already doing in EDR, the autonomy, um, to present you know, this picture of, okay, where did it come in? What tools can we best use to address this? 
um, and ultimately, as I mentioned, you know, achieve that, that, um, that outcome that we, we, we desire. Um, a little bit of data then, just very quickly in terms of third-party validation to back that up. I'm sure many of you are familiar with MITRE. Um, just a few key points I wanted to pull from this, from the, this year's testing as well. Um, always a bit of a scary one to say on stage, 100% um, protection. If you've ever been in, in the security space or <laughs> us as security professionals, we know that um, perhaps that's not always realistic or the not, not the best thing to say, uh, but is indeed the truth in this case, right? We, we actually protected 100% um, of um, the APT, so Advanced Persistent Threat uh, Testing Steps. And of those 109 steps that you'd see as events, uh, we produced just seven alerts. So that speaks to, again, the automation that we, we do behind the scenes in terms of you know, giving our customers context rich, uh, context rich um, but fairly straightforward alerts to understand, okay, what are we seeing here in terms of you know, MITRE tactics, techniques, and procedures? Um, and then finally, zero delays as well, because the approach of Sentinel-1 in terms of how the agent functions, uh, we're doing a lot more in real time on the device at machine speed. So we're using static AI built into the agent, but we're also using um, dynamic behavioral analysis in real time to understand, okay, first and foremost, what, let's inspect this file when it lands on, on disk, but also what is it doing at the time of execution. All of that happens without sending data up to the cloud as well, um, which would naturally create a delay. So, you know, very, very quick to, to react to attacks um, and provide visibility into them as well. Um, and so to give you that, that holistic view then of what XDR looks, to, looks like to us, um, on the left-hand side of the, of, of the slide here, you can see uh, where we're taking ingestion sources from today. Um, so currently, we support endpoint in terms of uh, yeah, laptop servers, Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, also legacy systems back to um, XP, SP3, and Server 2003 R2, so pretty comprehensive coverage there. Um, we also do mobile uh, devices into the same console now, cloud security as well in terms of containers and cloud workloads. Um, yeah, so we've got those as our native ingestion sources, but as I mentioned, for our open marketplace and into our data lake, pulling um, additional data sources uh, from best-of-breed tools into that central uh, data platform. And you can see within that some of those T numbers that come with MITRE, right? So understanding, okay, what's going on behind the scenes here um, and, produce, um, and presenting that to our customers in a way that gives you the best possible outcome. So a very, very quick example of that. Um, if, we saw for, if we saw a phishing uh, attack on, on one of your users, okay, Sentinel-1 identifies that malicious attachment, great. Maybe as an automated XDR response action off the back of that, we force that user to uh, reset their password in Okta or re-authenticate. Uh, we restrict their email permissions as well. You know, all of that done um, without you know, having any human involvement there as well. Um, what, that, what that looks like within the console here, you can see on the right-hand side, just very quickly then, uh, grabbing some logs from you know, Ativo, for example, on, on the identity side, uh, from Microsoft AD as well. Um, and this is you know, what a typical alert looks like in terms of understanding the scope, um, any action that, that has been taken on it, um, and how widespread it was. And in terms of how we want XDR to look for our customers, right? I, I spoke about simplifying uh, the approach, not having to go down into that code level and write the integrations. Um, you can see here that it's very, very much simplified within our console, right? So we've got a few there, for example, so Zscaler, Okta, and, and Mimecast. Um, and all that would be would be setting up those radio button style approaches, right? Where if we see X, you know, malicious attachment, then I want uh, my other solution to do this. And really, that's how we see, um, you know, this, this um, uh, marketplace progressing, the natural evolution of uh, NGAV, EDR, um, and XDR. Um, what does that lead to? I think I'm just about out of time here. I'm over, my apologies. Um, again, we'll finish with a bold statement then, zero ransomware impact, um, but it allows your, your resources to scale at the same rate as we see uh, threats today. And uh, indeed, we have customers already utilizing this. So uh, appreciate your time today. It was great to speak to you. As I mentioned, uh, we're just outside the door here. Look for the purple uh, and you'll find us. But yeah, really appreciate your time and thank you.